Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Are we together? The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall the preacher go except he be sent? Except he be sent. So please do not take lightly and do not take casual every opportunity you have to learn the ways of God. God is taking away from our lives the religiosity around information that cannot produce results. I know something about prayer. I know something about fasting. I know something about night vigil. I know something about communion. I know something about the name of Jesus. And we have little, little um, dimensions of scattered spiritual truth that are not synergized to produce victory in our lives. So our Christian experience becomes one that is full of fear because we do not know the, the, the arsenals that were designed to command what level of victory. There is a random pursuit. Listen, the faith life can be an interesting adventure when you are equipped with knowledge. You are no longer ignorant. You know. You know what it takes to bring favor. You know what it takes to open closed doors. The goal is never for a man of God to stand and become king of kings and lord of lords over your life. Uh -uh. The goal is that by the election of grace, you are immersed under this atmosphere of knowledge and that you are equipped to the point where you now become a savior yourself on the strength of the truth that you know and you have. Result after result, it now begins to strengthen your confidence. You get to a point where you are no longer doubting, you are not hoping. Does this work? Does this not work? You know, he said, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? The saints are built in this kingdom through the communication of the word, more specifically the exegesis of doctrine. Doctrine is the name given to the course content, the course curriculum that builds the believer to a point of stature and maturity in the spirit so more than the miracles and the manifestations in as much as those things are very important but we must submit ourselves to the methodical approach of spiritual growth where we not only know the lord but we understand his ways they are called the mysteries of the kingdom jesus said i am the way I'm not only a person, I am God's authorized method. You can study Jesus the way, as the pathway to victory. Please run away from that Christian narrative that continues to endorse and justify failure in your life. Provided you are knowing the Lord, it downplays the place of excelling in life. And makes it look like there is no need you believe that narrative no matter how well intentioned you will use your lifetime paying the price for it I am come he said John chapter 10 and verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then he says I am come that he may have life that is a level then he says and then to have it more abundantly so there is life and there is abundant life life the peace that you have with God based on the impartation of eternal life more abundant life is eternal life in your spirit alongside a victorious life on earth that is abundant life I made up my mind years ago that I will never lead a people who excel in their spirit work prayer fellowship with God and then become failures in life and their lives become a reproach to the victory that was won when jesus said it is finished he did not only mean the sin problem was finished he also meant dominion had been restored are we together now you have to believe the whole counsel of god many times 
some of these erroneous doctrines come out of a combination of pride and frustration pride because we do not open ourselves to learn more frustration because we exhaust the body of knowledge we know and so we are not able to command other levels of results in frustration we now build a theology around our failure to explain away the possibility of complete victory a believer can have complete victory you can love the lord and grow in passion while your finances also grow while your influence grows while you enjoy longevity and have peace with your children this is abundant life are we together if it is true that the gospel and the kingdom life was designed to be useful to everyone then it means it must capture within itself the ability to solve every problem we find on earth i believe in the whole counsel of god and by the grace of god i will not fail to bring to us spiritual truth after spiritual truth my assignment is to labor with the spirit and in partnership with other vessels across the body of christ to sieve and piece together the working knowledge of the word the spiritual principles that are assigned first for our knowledge of god in experience and then for our excelling in life and to serve it so passionately and diligently to whoever is interested that if and when you embrace these truths and you believe them and apply them you know many times we say one word from the Lord can change your life that's not exactly true one word from the Lord that is accurately taught understood and engaged with understanding that is the word that produces you read your Bible the Bible says that the sower came and sowed the word Satan himself came and uprooted the seed Satan is not afraid of the word. He is afraid of the union of the word with the believer who understands it. Remember that his assignment, his office in heaven was the light bearer. He was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom. He's not afraid of the word. What Satan is afraid of is your understanding the word and your engaging it. Because the power of God is released at the instance of your understanding and applying, not just receiving. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So let me just use a few minutes to touch on a topic that I believe would help to accelerate our growth. Psalm 65, verse 2. The mystery of prevailing prayer. The mystery of prevailing prayer. I want to teach you something about prayer to add to your spiritual arsenals that will command victory after victory in your life the bible says oh thou that hearest prayer this immediately tells you not everybody can hear prayer oh thou that hearest prayer it says unto thee shall all flesh come this statement is both an acknowledgement and a recommendation the writer is recommending that among the many people who claim to be able to hear and answer prayer through my research i have found out that there is only a single individual who sustains the ability to hear prayer and my recommendation is all flesh if you really need your prayer answered there is one who hears prayer he says unto thee shall all flesh come the subject of prayer is a very interesting one because every religion, regardless what they believe, they believe in prayer as the medium of communicating with the divine. Almost every religion believes that there is a reality beyond the three-dimensional realm. They have all kinds of propositions that have been strengthened by their experiences, but altogether they believe that there is some force or some deity above and beyond the realm of science that can come into partnership with men here and now and produce dimensions of victory that is not given to ordinary men so the subject of prayer is not new across religions across all kinds of faith practices but then the challenge many times has been that believers 
become frustrated because after dissipating hours and energy in what we know and call to be prayer it looks to me and to many of us in our experience that the amount of energy even physical and emotional energy that is being exerted into this activity we call prayer doesn't seem commensurate to the results that follow are we in agreement so week in week out we have the house of God across this city, across this nation, filled with professing believers who are praying in some way, many adding with fastings. But when you compare the level of energy, the level of zest and zeal and emotional strain that we go through in that activity we call prayer versus the result that comes from it, it doesn't seem to add up. And yet the Bible tells us that God is love the Bible tells us God is Abba, that he is more willing, if he did not spare his son Jesus, he's more willing to give us all things. Are we together? Luke chapter 11. The disciples began to study the life and the ministry of Jesus. Now, until Jesus came, John the prophet, who we call the Baptist, had his disciples some of them later became the disciples of jesus theologically speaking and they saw him pray they saw him do a lot of things and um he worship sessions and here's what he said he said when a spirit leaves a man jesus is teaching now when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through dry regions looking for a place of refuge why is that so there's no time to explain it to you you see God, spirit beings have spirit bodies. There is something called the law of territory. You are only at ease in a territory when you are made up of the same material with that territory. Are we together now? That means if you are in heaven, you will never be at peace until you are made with the material of that atmosphere. Are we together now? This disembodied spirit you see, when they left their original estate, you know what that means? Because angels and these spirit beings can translate into different states. Not just like men that were here, always human. Now, to perform certain assignments, they would have to translate, downgrade themselves to certain levels. They did that in rebellion and when they tried to return back to their original estate, they were hijacked. So till today, all these embodied spirits are in a state of restlessness because they are not in heaven and they are roaming around the earth and in the earth here they are violating a law of territory because they do not have a material body for their spirits to find rest are, are you understanding it now so constantly these embodied spirits are in a straight loitering across the length and the breadth of the earth and the way God created the human body is that there is a possibility of multiple spirits coexisting in the same body. It is not only one spirit that can coexist. One man had a legion. You remember in the Bible? That's to tell you how scarce accommodation is for these demons. That a legion can make do with one body to find rest. So don't play games with your body. That's to tell you bodies are serious real estate issues in the realm of the spirit oh yes when demons see bodies that are available they don't play games with it no a body has now prepared for me so when these spirits find expression in a body they find some level of rest they can occupy animals like they, they entered the swine. Is that true? But the most comfortable body is the human body. Why? Because humans are the zenith of God's creation. And their level of complexity can allow the demons to find expression. The presence of will, emotion, and intellect can allow them to find expression. They may not have that level of liberty with animals. So there is a constant search for bodies. But here's where I'm going. The Bible says when a demon leaves a human body, it gets back into that state of restlessness. Are we together? It goes around dry regions 
are not finding a place here's what the demons will say like the prodigal son the demon will say i will arise and go back and go back to my house the demon is still calling the place he left my house that means in his mind there is still a possibility of returning and then the bible says when it comes it will find that body swept it will find that body clean but it finds it empty and the demon is kind enough to invite other demons higher than itself to build fortification to return to that individual so that the latter part of that individual is worse than the beginning herein lies the mystery behind people who get free momentarily and then it looks like their situation multiply because they did not know what to do with the house of god my house shall be called the house of prayer there are six reasons i've written here why all believers must pray there are six reasons i've written here we'll take that for tonight and pray if you do not understand um, do you know do you know please look up do you know the average believer prays largely to ease the guilt of looking like an unserious christian they are not really interested in the results subconsciously there seems to if you are a believer and you are living among other believers you know prayer has a way of intimidating you someone is praying seriously and that prayer is judging your own seriousness you keep looking at yourself and in response to that sense of judgment you find a way of conforming to that religious activity as an act of appeasal you're not interested in the results The reason is because most of our prayer is not motivated by understanding. We have not been taught what prayer does. And so we just do it because Jesus did it. We just do it because it makes us feel spiritual. But let me show you six biblical reasons why believers must pray. Ready? Number one, the first reason, and those of you who are following from your homes, from every nation please do well to write it down so that you can teach others too we need to mature the body by helping them understand what prayer does the first reason why we pray is that god commanded that we pray it is a command two scriptures luke chapter 18 and verse 1 popular scripture i use it a lot when teaching especially around the subject of prayer this was a parable now in his earth work jesus used a lot of parables why because his listeners were not spiritual people they were not regenerated their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit had not been developed through the ministry of the word and prayer so he had to employ parables to help them explain how the kingdom works and he spake a parable to this end the morale of the parable is that men everybody say men men here doesn't just mean the male gender men humans that humans ought always to pray and not to faint so it's a command the whole idea of the story is to bring us to a point where we understand the power and the excellency of prayer the bible says there was a city verse 2 luke 18 and verse 2 there was a city in a city a judge May you never meet this kind of judge in your life in Jesus' name. <laughs> My apologies to those who are, those of us who are judges and magistrates, I'm your friend. There was in a city a judge. Look at the description of this kind of man. The Bible says, which feared not God. That means it's difficult for God to speak to him. Number two, he neither regarded man. You couldn't bribe him, you couldn't come and beg. What sort of a man is this? So this is scene one. And then scene two, the Bible says there was a widow. A widow is a, supposedly a defenseless woman. Her source of security and defense has been taken away from her. He's teaching you the power of prayer. And then the Bible says she came to him, that man. Avenge me of my adversary. 
verse 4 the Bible says he would not for a while but afterwards he said within himself my God that means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation if you pray with time there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations it says though I fear not God so the man is aware he's aware of his condition it's not just that the writer is telling lies the man is aware he's testifying here now that even though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubled me so there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances i will avenge her lest by her importunity or the bible says her continual coming she weary or weaken me this is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit that no matter how weak and defenseless you are if you can engage prayer consistently that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances prayer is a command once you are a man if you are an angel and you are a spirit you don't need to pray but provided you are wearing this material body the Bible mandates that we pray first Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 second scripture for that point let's hurry up first Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Thessalonica and he says pray without season the word pray without season does not mean pray from morning till night every day you do that you become an irresponsible man you will not be able to fulfill other things the idea here is be consistent the power of prayer is not just in the activity but the consistency pray without ceasing number two why should we pray according to first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 the bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with god and fellowship with heaven the Bible says in this case, speaking about praying in an unknown tongue, it says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now, there's no time to contrast this with what the Bible calls diverse kinds of tongues. There are two different experiences. When we come to the series on the Holy Spirit, then we touch the gifts of the Spirit. Then I will teach you this. The Bible um, creates... A dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the prayer language that was given to all believers this has been an age-long controversy in the body of Christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues like all the other nine gifts um, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call when you read all through the books of acts every time the holy ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the holy spirit they began to speak whether it's acts chapter 2 whether it's acts chapter 6 to 8 whether it's acts chapter 19 the most classic sign or the most classic defense of the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in Acts chapter 19. Maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that. Verse 1, the Bible says, Paul having passed through the upper coast, the Bible says that um, he came to Ephesus and then he found certain disciples. Follow the discourse, verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were disciples so you see there was something about their teacher their teacher was not teaching them something they said in our lecture we've not received this we don't even know that there's anything called the holy spirit surprise now he said unto what then were you baptized and they said unto john's baptism now the lecture begins verse 4 he said john's baptism verily verily john baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on christ verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus the miracle now 
and when Paul had laid his hands on them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied the Bible tells us their number verse 7 the Bible says and all the men were about 12 and they all received so I just thought to bring this in we have a separate series where we'll deal with that praise the name of the Lord but just for you to know that when we talk about the prayer language of tongues we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues are we together fellowship with God when you begin to pray in the spirit it brings fellowship in fact the Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with God, with God you fellowship with the spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from God into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship number three why does the Bible mandate that we pray prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 just two verses after what we just where we just read first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 the Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it edify it the word edify is an architectural term you build yourself you build capacity in the spirit remember the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength capacity is small so you build capacity in the spirit when you pray he that prays edifies himself Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer Luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 Luke chapter 9 the Bible says and it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings he took Peter John and James and went up to the mountain to pray verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed watch transformation two things happen one the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering there is a dimension of beauty and glory you evolve is like it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray I am telling you this works you can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself growth and transformation bring for me a weak believer timid completely ignorant but with the heart that is bent on prayer I show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later let one day become one week become one month become one year become three years become five years and I show you a sign and a wonder was it not Paul himself that says I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all are we together I hope God is blessing us say amen. amen it's very important that we pray growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray now you see for many believers prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving not transformation the primary assignment of prayer I'll be teaching as as we proceed in the series the primary assignment of prayer believe me is not for breakthroughs for miracles etc no most of the breakthroughs that we need we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom remember the Bible says when you are praying pray that your kingdom come 
because when his kingdom comes there are many things you would not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of God's mercy correcting our ignorance so if you understand the kingdom and the ways of God your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth not just petitions because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph, result after result in your life. Is that true? God's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles, signs and wonders. They are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely. But to we who are in the kingdom, miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom growth and transformation show me a believer who engages in prayer for many of us our prayer is not systemic it's not methodical it's haphazard if you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning good for God and good for you that day you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up then you quickly catch up you ask for forgiveness you repent and then you start again do you know that even in the secular mastery is gained through consistency ask anybody who leads his field in the secular you do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way you have to invest your time your energy your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery consistency growth and transformation you must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer you discipline yourself you get up in the morning this is the day the Lord has made you are praying Sheila Kapo Siata. you understand edification you begin to deposit prayer i'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time that means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you prayer is powerful yes sir your prayer can be like an usher like a protocol you send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive if for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead you know what the woman's prayer did to that judge that's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly it's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into it's risky because the whole world lies in wickedness are we together let's hurry up we have to pray Jude 1, Jude has only one chapter, verse 20. The Bible again talks about prayer. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer builds up. There are many ways that prayer builds up. It builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. So when you begin to pray, what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated. You can know then you come into dimensions where people like Papa Hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit where you can know things even though your eyes may not see angels but you can know they are here and at first when you start in the school of prayer it will look like you are lying but the accuracy and the predictability of your result will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie you will know you will perceive danger prayer is powerful it brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms you are human yet you are spiritual you can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities number four the fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession yes sir warfare and intercession ladies and gentlemen demons are real spirits are real wickedness is real 
the devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of God over our lives and all that concerns us. Meaning if you fold your hands and let him be, he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you. But there is a provision in our dealing with God where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of Christ. And through this mystery we call warfare and intercession, we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now. Warfare and intercession is very powerful. James chapter 5 and verse 13, Apostle James now is teaching us. James 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, is any among you afflicted, buffeted? Is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant? Is many among you seeing the handwriting of Satan over your children, your life, your career, your business? Don't explain it away using science or sociology. It says the moment you find affliction, the solution is let him pray. We do every other thing but prayer. We discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation. And yet we do not pray. Is any among you afflicted? He says, let him pray. For time's sake, we may not read on, but when you read down to 18, it uses Elijah. It personifies an individual called Elijah. That he was a man of like passions, but he took the tool of prayer and literally stop rain physically not a parable over a territory let me tell you this elijah was not the only one who believed in the god of the bible and i'm sure there were people who said god don't mind him we command rain to come and yet rain did not come because a man had authority to prayer and god respected his authority regardless what you were saying that day you will keep talking if elijah did not speak rain would not come May God give us that kind of authority that you can stand and speak over your family and say, this year, you all rise and go to bed. It doesn't matter who is talking after you. He spoke too late. You have declared. Let all the enchantments and all the divination speak. Not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say, what are they saying now? No. Elijah's authority, when he declared it, he said, I know God. He went to bed. There were other prophets under the custody of Obadiah. I'm sure someone would have been annoyed and said, what an arrogant man. God, bring rain to show this man he's not the only one. And God said, no, he doesn't work like that. When you ascend in this spirit and you have authority, you will do wonders with it. He prayed for a space of three and a half years, there was no rain. And then to show you it was not luck, he went again and did the same thing and rain came. Hallelujah. Warfare and intercession. It was on the strength of prayer in Acts chapter 12. When you read from verse 1 to 17. The Bible says Peter was bound. Hand and feet in chains. They were preparing to kill him. But the Bible says verse 5. That Peter was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing. That's Paul's encouragement now. Of the church unto God for him. Believe me when I tell you prayer is powerful. They began to engage the realm of the spirit. Suddenly the Bible tells us that an angel came. The angel was always available. Peter would have died without that angel coming. And yet the angel was available. Somewhere in this series, we'll talk about the ministry of angels because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels. The Bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to see that the word of God is never called a lie in your life. That's the assignment of angels. They are enforcers. That means when there is nothing happening from your end, they keep loitering around. Did you know that one of the ways that Satan knows God is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the spirit. A prayerless believer does not have angelic activities. What are they doing? 
when satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities he was once there so he knows uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing they are coming in response when jacob slept in chapter 28 of genesis when he slept the bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending the bible never said they were coming to him he only saw them walking they were going to those who were calling their ministry that was why he said the lord was here these angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me there's no record of any angel bringing anything to him yet they were ascending and descending angels can be in your compound they can be in your vicinity they can be in your office ascending and descending bringing testimonies for those who are praying do not make the mistake of jacob jacob said the lord was in this place i had a chance for my lifting i had a chance for my rising but but according to the law of the will it will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do i want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens angels don't come because you're a christian they come because there is a demand jesus kept speaking he sent prayer to his future after three days i will rise it was not an information after three days i will rise when it was the third day god said you had the prayer an angel came rolled the stone and sat on it let me tell you if jesus kept quiet and never said anything he would have been surprised what will happen after three days the body would not decay but you will not come out either let the redeemed of the lord say so Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.